Everton's 2009 FA Cup campaign was a memorable one in so many ways. En route to the final, the Blues defeated three of the Premier League's top six teams and only came unstuck at the very last hurdle against another of them. It was always going to be tough against Chelsea at Wembley, but everyone connected with the club was determined to give it their best shot. Nothing whets the appetite like an FA Cup final. But way back in January, a glorious afternoon in the sunshine at Wembley seemed a million miles away when Everton visited the rather less salubrious surroundings of the Moss Rose for a third round tie. At the time, Macclesfield Town was struggling in League Two. But with the calamities of Shrewsbury Town and Oldham Athletic still fresh in the memory, nobody at Goodison was taking anything for granted. The FA Cup something which we've not done particularly well in. We've not had a great run in. So let's hope this is the this is the, this could be the one. But you take every game as as they come along. We've got a big game against Macclesfield. We'll treat it like uh, like any other game and prepare for it like any other game because we we want to make sure we get through and get into the next round. On the day, Macclesfield gave a really good account of themselves, and it needed a moment of inspiration to finally settle the tie in Everton's favour. Pressure just before half time then by Everton. This is Arteta clipping it inside the area, headed clear, comes down to Osman, tries a shot, it's in, it's gone over the line, and Everton have broken the deadlock. Four minutes before half time, Leon Osman scores for Everton. Arteta created the space, looked up, had a clear, was not a bad one. The shot in was really good by Osman. Lovely piece of chest control, he's just on his back foot when this came out, so he just managed to control it, keep it down, put it towards the goal, and Brain could not keep it out. And Everton, with 41 minutes on the clock, break the deadlock. Oh, just belted forward, shot coming in, great save from Howard. That was a fantastic save from Howard, and it came from John Rooney. The referee blows the whistle, so right at the end, Tim Howard making the save, which guarantees Everton are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. It was never going to be easy. Um, all credit to Macclesfield. I thought they really stuck at it. They had a really solid shape, and, and, and they tried everything they got. Um, it's very important in these games that you just get through, and, and we got through, and that's the main thing. Yeah, it was a cracking goal, yes. It, um, ball went in the box, headed out, and, and he can do that. You know, He's, he's got great shooting ability. Um, he took the, took it really well, showed great technique and put it right in the top corner. I think Mikel crossed it, headed out. Uh, fortunately, I would, I'd put myself in the right space and uh, you know, I put it in the back of the net. You know, they were uh, really good today, they put up a great fight. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be hard coming here and, and, it, and it proved that way today. It was it was a tough game, you know, they should be proud of themselves. Um, but you know, I, think, I thought we just had enough um, in reserve maybe that we could have pushed on if necessary, but you know, we did the job today. When Liverpool were the very first team picked out of the drum for the fourth round draw, there was almost an air of inevitability that Everton would follow. At the time of the first game at Anfield, Liverpool were leading the way in the Premier League, and as such, they started as very warm favourites, especially as Everton were without the talismanic Marouane Fellaini, who was suspended. Well, he was always going to miss two games, wasn't he, somewhere? So. Who knows, these might have been the best two for him to miss. And he said 10 bookings, we take that and we go on. As I said, it, he's out now, so it's, uh, it's old news, really. There's no doubt that Liverpool had more of the play at Anfield, but after a pulsating 90 minutes and a wonderfully strong defensive display by Everton, it was on as even. Close proximity. Here's, it's, it's in, it's scored by Julian Lescott. And once again, Tim Cahill has got away from the Liverpool defence. It was finished by Julian Lescott. But Liverpool's marking not good enough again, and Everton take the lead here. 26 minutes gone, Tim Cahill's header knocked across the line by Julian Lescott. His first goal in the FA Cup, and it's Liverpool nil, Everton 1. The marker was Alonso, he couldn't keep hold of Tim Cahill. And that was the last touch. Julian Lescott nods it in at the spy and cop end. It's Liverpool nil, Everton one. Gerard flicks it on to Torres. 
Still Torres flicked forward to Gerard. Gerard inside the penalty. He's got to go on his own. And he scored. Tim Howard was beaten at his front post there. It was a flick on by Torres. Person looking capable of piercing the Everton defence is their captain, Stephen Gerard. No, the Everton lads were really resilient today and uh, dug in and, and stuck at it and never gave in. And in the end, you know, we've got a chance to, to play them at Goodison and hopefully go through in the next round. They're doing an unbelievable job, but, but it's no more than I expect from them. They're a great group. Uh, you know, they've got great courage. They went out, they believed today we could get a result. And they went out there and for long periods, there was, we looked as if we were in with a right good chance. I hoped that we could maybe put Liverpool under more pressure than we did, but I think their performance made it very difficult for us. And the gaffer goes into great detail in um, set plays and um, obviously their zone also. We thought if we um, slip against them, we could... Uh, beat them. Obviously, when we go one and up, we are confident that we can we can hold out. But um, we knew it was going to be a tough second half. We could come out and, and press us most of the half. So uh, we've got to be happy with the with the draw. The fourth round replay was the third meeting between Everton and Liverpool in the space of just 18 days. The first two, both at Anfield, were drawn. But at Goodison Park on the 4th of February, there had to be an eventual winner. And now that the battlefield was Goodison Park. Did that mean the pendulum had swung Everton's way? We moved on immediately after the game. We moved on and started to prepare for, for another game. So uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, I think we can play better. I don't think we played to our best, but I think we can play better. And hopefully if we do that this time, we'll, we'll get a victory instead of a draw. Our biggest problem is if, if uh, we let them play and worry too much about them. So it, it doesn't really matter what they change. They've got obviously enough. Uh, players to put out three teams, whereas us will always keep the same and put our strongest teams out because you know we respect the cup and we want to um, do as well as we can. I feel that it's all about just this game, just win this game. And, and if you beat a team like Liverpool in a cup like this, then really, um, hypothetically speaking, you should go on to win it. Merseyside derbies have a reputation for providing unlikely goal-scoring heroes. Danny Kadamatari and Lee Carsley spring instantly to mind for Evertonians. And the fourth round replay at Goodison Park saw another name added to that list. Step forward, Dan Gosley. Well, he nearly got into trouble there. Cahill was in quickly and Everton have won it fairly. Now, this is Osman. Cahill in space in front of him. He's still got room, Cahill. This is Arteta, though, for Everton. Plays it in, has Tim Cahill. Great layoff chance. Oh, Osman hits the post. Still danger here. Ball played in. Rodwell goes for the header. Can't get there. There's that move again. Lovely little layoff by Cahill to Osman. Looked as though he must score. But Leon Osman really got the meat of his boot behind it, but not the direction. And that's how agonisingly close he was. Alonso. Skirtle gives it away. And Lescott will drive forward here. Well, Lucas's challenge. And this could be. Is it another yellow? Is he going to go? He is. Lucas is off. It's a second yellow for Lucas. Ridiculous challenge by Lucas. He leaves the field. Liverpool are reduced to ten men. Jack Yelka has Osman. Now Osman tries a shot, takes a deflection. Chance here for Young Gosling. Saved by Rayner. Corner to Everton. Well, he was in quickly, Gosling, he did everything he could. Reina reacted quickly, it was a lovely turn by Osman. Got a decent shot in, palmed away. And Reina had to be up quickly because the first to react was the youngster. Took a deflection off the studs, as you can see, of Skirtle. Gosling reacted quickly, Reina was up to block it. But again, Everton coming close to making the breakthrough. Header coming in, oh! Just wide, and it was Tim Cahill who got up again and beat the Liverpool defence in the air with the ball just going wide of the target. Up he goes. Osman slipped as well, couldn't stub out a boot. Now it's Jack Yelker who continues his run into the middle. Chance for the ball to be played into the danger zone. Great chance here for Gosling. Still Gosling shoots and scores for Everton! Dan Gosling's broken the deadlock with three minutes of extra time still to play. Dan Gosling, the youngster, scores his second goal for Everton and has surely won the game for the Blues. But he was cool and he was calm. And he knocked the ball into the corner of the goal.
It's been like that the three games, but there's been nothing to choose between the teams. For the first 30 minutes, they totally dominated. We, we, we couldn't get the ball, and, the, and then, then we showed our composure. We, we, we needed to show a little bit more courage, and uh, we did that. And uh, like I say, a fantastic occasion, great games, and we're just so happy that we sent our fans home happy. The two young boys done done terrific with, with what they what they had to do. Uh, so they're coming in, and, and I think when the game opened up, it suited Jack because Jack is a good passer. He's elegant in his play. And Dan Gosling, I've always thought, can get you a goal. You know, he's got bits in his game where he pops up and, and gets a goal. And, and thankfully tonight he did. We we believed we'd score. Um, you know, we left it late. Um, but we, we, we felt they were tiring. Um, and we capitalised on that. You know, young Dan Gosling's come in. Um, it's what dreams are made of, you know, scoring the winner in a derby. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's great. It's great for us and it's great for him. You know, one day we went down to ten men, you know, we had to make sure we'd done more jobs and didn't give it away and and it's been hard. We've had three games against Liverpool, so let's remember, you know, what they've spent to, to get in the position they're in compared to what we've done. So uh, you know, we, you take a wee bit of pride in that, but in the same breath it's eleven v eleven when they cross over the line and the Everton players never let MD down tonight, that was for sure. As soon as the lads come out for the second half, uh, all of them told me to get warm because Felly was struggling. And um after about five minutes, I think it was, uh, got a nod to go on. And yeah, I mean, it is easier when you've got a longer period of time to play and get into the game. Just keep getting up and back and uh, make sure you track the runners and get in the box. And I got in the box and uh, scored. The reward for that dramatic win against Liverpool was a fifth round tie with another of the Premier League's high flyers, Aston Villa. And Goodison Park was all set for another mouthwatering encounter. Well, we're playing Aston Villa, who are, who are, I think, seven or eight games unbeaten, so it's difficult to turn around and say you can be that, obviously, that confident because they're, they're playing really well. But we're at home, uh, the draws haven't been that kind to us, so we'll go into it and, and try and win it. And uh, we have confidence because of our form. But uh, to say that about this one game, I think it's hard because I think both teams are, are playing well and uh, I think it's a hard one to call. It was another fine match, and this time everything went according to the script with the perfect happy ending that the Evertonians had craved. Teta's corner, nobody picked up Cahill, and it's gone in this time, and it's Jack Rodwell and Everton lead. Nobody picked up Tim Cahill, and Jack Rodwell was quickest on the rebound, and Everton lead inside four minutes, and it's the youngster, Jack Rodwell, who nets for his side. Petrov denying Cahill. And Rodwell from the rebound, making no mistake. Petrov again. Agbon Lahore to chase. Gabby Agbon Lahore, was he tripped? He was, it's a penalty to Aston Villa. It's Milner. It's one all. And James Milner with his fifth of the season levels for Aston Villa in the eighth minute. Only won by Tony Hibbert. Now here it goes Anichibi. Victor Anichibi and still going. Anichibi takes the tumble and it's another penalty. Steve Sidwell, the man who brought down the onrushing Victor Anichibi. Sidwell goes into the book and it's a second penalty of the afternoon at Goodison Park. Powerful run from the Nigerian driving into the penalty area. And it's Mikel Arteta who has the chance to take advantage from the spot. Can Brad Friedel deny him? It's Arteta. It's there. And Everton lead by two goals to one. And it's the Spanish playmaker, Mikel Arteta, with his seventh of the season, who restores Everton's lead. Excellent penalty. Driven into the side netting of the goal, always seen as a guide for a well-taken penalty. Friedel going the wrong way. Brings in James Milner. Can Milner find a decent delivery? Towards Carew! Great save by Tim Howard. Really good save by the American. And that man, John Carew, going perilously close to squaring the tie. Lovely touch from the big man, and what a good save that is by Tim Howard. 
he knows how close it was. Gosling again. Baines. Cahill. And each a bit. Gosling running ahead of him. Here's Gosling. It's come beyond him. Cahill! Surely it's there. Everton with their third of the afternoon, and it's Tim Cahill. Cahill with the goal that sends the Gladys Street into delirium. And is that the goal that sinks Aston Villa's FA Cup hopes for the season? And this time, he has netted beyond Gosling and beyond Davis. Cahill didn't make the perfect connection with the shot, but it was good enough. And after an each of his crossing, Tim Cahill gives Everton a two-goal lead as they move into a 3-1 advantage with just 14 minutes left at Goodison Park. I say well done to the players, and well done to the players who come into the team, you know, the likes of Jack Rodwell and Victor Amachibi today. I thought today was the, was the, the most sort of struggling we had been for numbers with, with Pinar and Osman out and Fellaini out. I knew we were going to be going to be short, but uh, all credit to them. I thought they came in. It, se it looked seamless, really, and they went on and, and kept the whole thing moving along. Of course, hard. It's a, it's a really good team. Villa, they're playing really well at the moment. They've got a lot of pace up front. They're really dangerous on the white areas, and uh, we knew it was going to be a, a tough game. I think we played really well. Keep them nearly quiet and uh, and get get through the FA Cup, which is massive for us. It's just taking a game at a time and, and, and really trying to, to, to emphasise how well we play. You know? And I think today, beating p people like Liverpool and, and, and teams like uh, Aston Villa, um, you know, it, it shows how, how far we've come. The last time Everton met Middlesbrough in an FA Cup tie, Everton were nearer the bottom of the table than the top and the side has strolled to a 3-0 victory. The then Toffees manager, Walter Smith, was subsequently relieved of his duties. This time Everton had home advantage and it was Middlesbrough who was struggling for Premier League points. But even so, David Moyes knew full well he couldn't take anything for granted. Very much so. I'm impressed with Gareth Southgate and uh, you know, he's, he's now been at Middlesbrough and he's, you know, he's earned his stripes there and come through some difficult times and, and uh, he's got a good side. And, uh, I watched them play last week and they played very well. If Middlesbrough were the underdogs ahead of the match, it certainly didn't show for 45 minutes. But after the break, it was a different story. Bates. Pinar trying to get back. Lobbed in dangerously. It's gone in, has it? Is it crossed the line? It's gone in and it's Wheater that scored it. Howard decided to stand his line, got a hand to it, but as you can see quite clearly, it had crossed the line by a good yard or so. And David Wheater, just before the interval, has put Middlesbrough in front here. Osman. Jagielka back to Cahill. Dangerous ball for Fellaini! Who scores for Everton? Marouane Fellaini! Cahill lobbed the ball in, the goalkeeper came and in the end was caught in no man's land as the ball dipped in the wind and Fellaini lobbed it over the top of him and into the goal, and Everton a level. Great header by Fellaini. Everton won, Middlesbrough won. Lofts it forward, the ball almost dies in the wind there on the edge of the Middlesbrough penalty area. Arker is in, so is Osman. Good looking ball, looking for Saha, couldn't get a connection. Pinar will keep the pressure on the Middlesbrough defence. Played it dangerously again and nodded home by Louis Saha. And Goodison Park goes wild. Pinar turned and played it in quickly. It was a lovely one. And Saha nipping in to the gap between defenders. Knocked it home with Jones once again. Only a spectator. The players knew at half-time what was expected and I thought for 10 or 15 minutes at the start of the second half, I think uh, what they showed was probably how we felt in the dressing room. What changed? They played like Everton. They, they didn't play like Everton in the first half. Uh, start of the second half, they got to people, made it harder. And, and we know that you know we're, we're without one or two at the moment, but that was that was no excuse for, for uh, the way they were. And uh, you know, to be fair, they're, they're brilliant lads. They've got a great spirit and they didn't half show it and they needed to because uh, there was a few years tingling when they went out in the second half. 
he stated the obvious. The obvious was that we're under par and, you know, the leaders of the team and the players didn't show what we should have showed, you know, and uh, we all hold our hands up, but it's the way you react and it's how you can show your character as a person and who you are playing for this team. And I feel in the second half, um, we went straight out there and we tried to win the game in the first 10 minutes. It's a great uh, great team, great team spirit. And uh, obviously the, the, the lads are great with me because uh, with, uh, with my, uh, my problem and uh, they've always been behind me. So it's, it's great to have that kind of teammates around. To have a presence of uh, Louis' stature in our football club, it's something for us that, that we really appreciate because, you know, he's got a great record and he played for a fantastic club in Man United. And obviously, we aspire to win medals like what he won at Man United. So, um, you know, we respect him a lot. And, we, and you know, when he can do things like that, then uh, it takes a lot of pressure off the team. Whether or not you agree that the FA Cup semi-finals belong at Wembley, you can't escape the fact that playing them at the National Stadium certainly adds spice to the occasion. Not since a 1995 Charity Shield win against Blackburn Rovers had the Evertonians had the chance to watch their team at Wembley. So they were determined to enjoy it. The atmosphere inside the stadium was magnificent and there was a special Everton welcome for Mikel Arteta. Oh, it's unbelievable, even when we, when we were coming to the stadium, how many fans we, we were outside, it was unbelievable. To be honest, uh, it's a shame for me, it's so hard to take it, but uh, at least I can, I can be here and enjoy it with my teammates. The Manchester United team sheet had raised a few eyebrows when it was announced. No Rooney, Ronaldo, Carrick or Van der Sar. But well, those who were on parade for Sir Alec Ferguson were still a force to be reckoned with. What transpired was a fascinating battle between two teams fully determined to reach the final. Lays it off this time to Cahill. Tim Cahill for Everton. Tries a shot and it breaks away from Costa. That's a penalty, is it? No, not given. Well back went down. Was there a connection? Difficult to see from that angle. And that is all we're going to have extra time. And ricochet to Baines. Baines turns it back. Chance here. Oh, it was an opportunity for James Vaughan. There is no question about it. And that is it. The end of extra time. It's Cahill against Foster. First penalty. And he's blasted it over. Berbatov then against Howard. And it's saved by Tim Howard. There's Baines. Scores. Ferdinand against Howard. And he saved it. Here comes Phil Neville. He shoots and he scores. Ooh, he sent it in off the upright. James Vaughan for Everton. Scores. Well done, James Vaughan. Anderson then against Howard. Scores. If Phil Jagielka scores this. Evan had a through to the FA Cup final. Imagine how Phil Jagielka feels. Here he comes, he's got a blast and he scored! And Everton are through to the FA Cup final. They've done it. Incredible stuff. Phil Jagielka kept his cool. And Everton are through to the final. An unbridled joy on the pitch, on the terraces. They've done great today for us. Another effort. Uh, the preparation we went into to getting the result. So, so I've just got to credit them for, for what they're doing. In adversity all season, you know, you, you think of the injuries and whatnot, and it would have been easy for us all to go under, but more importantly, the players have picked themselves up and made sure it's not been noticeable. We've all kicked on a different level. We've, we've all tried to, to, to make the club better in our, in our own ways, and, and we've tried to, 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 to go in the right direction. And, and the one thing that we've done <coughs> is, is prove that, that we can... We can do that, and we've, we've done it now, and now we have to finish it off. They were, they were trying to suck the ball into the back of the net up there, and, um, you know, it's great to have support like that. You, sh you see how much it means, and, um, you know, it means a lot more than uh, than it seemed to, to mean to the Man United fans today. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure about taking a penalty, obviously, after what happened last time, but there uh, wasn't too many specialists left on the pitch, so, um, you know, I said I'd go last. Hopefully, I uh, wouldn't need to take it, but I say thankfully, um, it was ended up being the, the sort of glory goal. You know, I think looking forward uh, to be able to represent Everton in the cup final. We walk out, we walk out in the same uh, same spot in a month's time. 
uh, will be one of the biggest highlights of my career. What a campaign it had been. An FA Cup run like no other that had gone before it. And there's no doubt that Everton were more than worthy finalists. So on May the 30th, 2009, it was North versus South in the final. Everton versus Chelsea at Wembley. I think we've been doing so well to beat Liverpool and uh, Man United. I think uh, they have confidence in the team and uh, the players too. They are more confident now and uh, before, but hopefully it is a big, big game and a uh, big final too. And uh, hopefully we we'll see how it goes. I'm more delighted to be here, you know, part of a fantastic team and hopefully um, as cheerleader today, um, I'll do my job and hopefully they'll do theirs. The biggest day in the last. I don't know, 20, 30 years for the club, and uh, we've got a great chance. We had an unbelievable run on the FA Cup, uh, winning best teams in England, so if we can beat Chelsea today, it's going to be a great day for the club. It's Merseyside versus West London. As we get underway, it's Everton against Chelsea. And Alex gets in a header. Good first touch for Pienaar to Cahill. Decent ball in by Pienaar. Fellaini in there leaping. Has a chance for Saha. What a start! Louis Saha for Everton. That is incredible. 20 seconds of the game gone. And Louis Saha scores for Everton. What an unbelievable start. It was struck so sweetly. It was really intelligent stuff. And what a shot by Louis Saha. Lampard. Malud has found plenty of space on that far side. Header! It's the equaliser from Didier Drogba! Didier Drogba gets the equaliser. Maluda, chance to cross. Lampard, lovely little turn of footing. Oh, what a goal from Frank Lampard! And the referee blows the whistle, and Chelsea have won the 2009 FA Cup. Well, I think for the, the way the players have performed uh, throughout the season, and, and today as well, uh, today was really tough for them. We're up against a good side. But there's no doubt that we deserve to be in the cup final. And I think that today they, they showed that. We, it was tight, we were beaten by the better team in the end. But uh, you know, we, we tried to make it as hard as we could for them. And you know, in the end, we just, didn't, didn't, just weren't quite good enough. No, I think everyone's worked really hard. It's been a big effort from everyone. I think everyone you know, deserves congratulating us, disappointed as we are. I think the lads you know, can, can take credit for what they've done this season. It is, we've been unbelievable this season with the squad, with the size of the team with uh, the players we have, with the staff, with the fans. You know, we've got so many positives to take and we should be proud of what we've done. And the biggest thing now is just to make sure that we keep this core of the squad, keep all the lads happy and um, add some quality. We've got the injuries coming back, so hopefully next year we'll all be back together again.